Hey guys, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles. And before we start our normal filming today, I gotta give a quick shout out to a pretty special guy who's turning five years old, and that's Elliot Ortiz. And I love seeing young people who are just uh, enthusiastic and love reptiles. And this little guy collects reptile business cards, so I've been told. So he should have one of ours uh, there for his birthday by now. We also wanted to tell him happy birthday here on YouTube. And I know that Elliot has an inchy pastel ball python. That's his very own ball python. That's pretty cool. So I wanted to show him one of my favorites from this last season. Since he has his own, I thought I'd show him one of mine really quick. And this is a lesser pastel. Uh, possible sulfur, but we're calling it just a lesser pastel for now. And this is one of our holdbacks we produced. And Elliot, this is one of my favorite snakes, and hopefully if you can, you know, make a comment or your mom can help you, maybe you can even post a picture of yours. I dislike how it's all blushed out through there. I think that looks really cool, and it's a really clean example of a pastel lesser. Just a beautiful, beautiful snake. Beautiful snake. All right, guys, well, happy birthday, Elliot. And now, let's get on back to filming. And what we're going to talk about today, since it's kind of a new year, you know, we're in January, we're going to talk about our pairings, most of them. There's a few things I'm not going to tell you about, but I'm going to tell you about most of them so you can see what we possibly have coming up in 2017 and why I am so extremely excited. And we're going to start up here. And now, since camera guy Kurt's here, I'm going to have to pull this all the way down so you can see what's going on. So let's see if I can avoid spilling it. Hey, look at there. And right there we have pairing number one. And that is a mystic male paired to a Mojave female. She's really bright for Mojave. Very exciting. And as you can see, there's something going on in there right now. So we'll put them back up. Once they get done, I'll get that all cleaned up too. They always make a big mess of the tub during rainy season. So that's pairing number one. Pairing number two is a pairing I do pretty much every year because I just like it. Whoa! God, this is a heavy tub. Right here you can see we're having some courtship. We may have already finished up, but we have a bumblebee and a big, big pastel female. So we're going to go for some killer bees. You guys will hear me talk about my killer bee all the time. It's one of my favorites, so I'd like to always make more of those. Slide that back in there. Oh, boy, when you pull these all the way out really tight. I think you can see now, Kurt. So let's just open this up. Here's a pair, and look at that. We're finally getting a little courtship out of that male. You can see his tail here. Now he's not locked in or anything. We don't have a lock, but he's been a little hard to get to breed. And this is a banana possible low expression calico. The hope with putting it to a normal is we can prove out exactly what it is. Which, again guys, one of the big valuable things about a nice big normal helps you prove stuff out. Nobody's in here but the het pied. And of course she's going to be paired with the pied, but he's got other job right now. And it almost looks like she might be. Don't bite me. She's one of my more cantankerous snakes. No, I thought maybe we were like starting to try to ovulate, but it doesn't look like it. She's just sticking the back in there. Let's keep on moving. Here you go. This is our lesser pastel possible sulfur male. Down to the one I just showed you, Elliot. And this is our killer bee female. You can see some courtship. We've had multiple locks here. Of course, we're going for some killer queen bees because that would just be really cool. So, uh, what was that back up? Well, let's see what's in here. Ah, this is a pretty simple one. What we have here is our albino female. This is what we're holding back from a uh, year, not last year, but the year before. That is a double het exanthic and albino. So he's het for snow, breeding back to his mother. Our female het snow isn't quite sized yet. She might make it late this season. We'll see when we'll push. This is one we're not going to show you. It's one of my secret ones. Here we go. We have a huge, massive. This girl's just a, a beast. That's a pastel head SK exanthic to a SK exanthic spider. They're not locked right now. We have had multiple locks between these two. I'm really excited here because this is my shot at zebra bees, guys. So that's like, for me, man, that's where it's at right there. So uh, then we'll come down to Kurtz. Camera guy Kurtz, first ball python of his very own. A little courtship going on there. And that is that ghost female. She was our last delay, but she's already locked up multiple times. She's put her weight back on nice. I expect her to be a late lay uh, again this year. But what we're doing is we made double hets for Het True Ghost last season, and we're doing that again using a different male. Same SK line, just a different kicker gene. That's a pastel exanthic. Then down here, 
is our big lesser female. She's also being bred to our lesser pastel possible sulfur. Obviously we're trying to make uh, bells because everybody loves bells. So there's that. All right, let's go over here. This is something I'm really excited about. You know, we're getting a little courtship, not a lock. We've had a lot of locks here. This is obviously a calico male to one of our own production bumblebee females. So that's really, really exciting because we can make calabies and calico pastels and calendars. Everything coming out of there is going to be good. So really, really excited. Here we go again. Again, another banana clutch. We have a black pastel paired to a banana male. So uh, hopefully we get those going. We've had a few locks there. He hasn't been, none of my banana males has, have been as eager to breed as the rest of my males. So we'll see. This female just kind of is getting to size now. So we just started breeding her. I'll pull her out for you. Nobody's in there with her. And what she's getting bred to is that same pastel head exantic. Reason being is this is a fire. Look at that belly pattern. Fire yellow belly. Uh, probably yellow belly. Hasn't been proven yet. So we're hoping, of course, to make... Mostly I'm worried about the fire. So I want to make some firefly head exanthics to do some firefly exanthics and some superfly exanthics down the road. Here you go. Our pied to pied clutch. It doesn't look like it, but there's two in there. The female's just laying on top of the male right now. So I don't think there's a pairing going on now, but we've had plenty of locks there too. So that's really exciting stuff. Never have too many pipes. See here, and we'll show you this one too. She is a little bit on the light side. She's running about 1,400 grams now. But she's extremely old, and she's eating like a beast. So when I say extremely old, she's not that old, but she's definitely mature enough to breed. So we are breeding her, even though we're breeding her a little about mm, 75 grams lighter than I like to. She's putting the weight on really, really nice. She has a really cool sheen to her. And we're also putting a banana to her. So looking for some banana pins there. I uh, might as well show you this girl too. This is one we're not breeding yet, but we're really hoping to. She's in shed. She's too small. She needs to gain quite a bit of weight to be ready to go. But this is my double het, or my het snow, basically, spider. And I think she is just gorgeous. I think the pattern on her, remember she's in shell. Let me get her over here in the light. This is, she looks like terrible right now, but the pattern is so, so clean on her. I just absolutely adore her pattern. You don't have a lot of noise, a lot of spotting or anything. It's just super clean, but you have the lines coming all the way down, which is what I like in my spiders. So this is a snake I've been enamored with ever since she hatched. So uh, if she doesn't make it this year, not too worried about it. Not going to push her. She gets there. Cool. If she doesn't. Cool. She'll get a chance to wait a year for sure if she needs to. Watch her nose. Alright guys, that is the pairings for 2017. Uh, there's a couple things I didn't show you because we got a few things we, you know, we're kind of keeping under our hat. A few things that we don't know exactly what we're going to do with yet uh, based on our males. So uh, I'll share those with you when the time comes. One thing we're going to try to do this year is when we do our egg videos, like our actual egg cutting videos, and yes, I'm a cutter, some of you like that, some of you hate that. I'm a late cutter, I don't believe in cutting really early, but we do, we do open our eggs. Uh, one of the reasons we do that is, I'll show you an example, this little girl right here, I'll try a little boy, she was born at a whopping 29 grams, I think it wasn't it, Kurt? Yeah. 29 grams, and I honestly don't know if she'd have been strong enough to cut out of the egg herself. We open those eggs at about day 58, and uh, I don't make a big hole, nor do I cut the top off. If you watch my videos, we just do a slit and make sure everything's okay in there, but it gives them a place to crawl out when the time comes without completely ruining the protective barrier. Obviously, you are making an opening in it, but she may not have been able to cut out on her own, or he, and that would have been a, a major loss because you're probably thinking, well, it's a spider. Well, it's a spider, het true ghost. I mean, it's a pretty neat snake, and it's special to the projects that we want to work which is what makes it important to us. It's I honestly don't care if it was a normal. If I make it, if I'm able to keep it going, and I want to do that. Um, so what we're going to do though is we're going to do a lot of those egg cutting videos live this year. So you're going to see a lot of the successes we have. You're going to see some of the failures that we're bound to have. Hopefully, very few of those are none. But you're going to be there when we hit the odds out of the park, 
and you're going to be there when the odds just are mean to us. But I want to share that with you in real time so you know that nothing that we do is hidden or in the dark. I want to be completely open with how we do things. So, all right, guys, that's all I got for you today. And again, Elliot, happy birthday, buddy. We'll catch you all later.